You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. I want to start off with some, I guess, following on from where we started the last episode, I guess, and just another further congratulations to um, George, who got married on Monday. I've seen some of the photos. Him and, him and his wife look amazing. Um, you know, back to embark on a wonderful journey and. As always, massive thank you to you, George. Um, and yeah, hope you had an amazing day. It's funny where, you know, you said congratulations to him and he replied and you're, like, and you're just like, dude, you know, get back to your wedding day. Like, you know, we, <laughs> we can speak whenever. You should be, you know, you should be so drunk that, you know, you can't even respond. So again, a massive shout out to George, to the whole, you know, Go Time Dolphins team. To anyone who's ever helped us in the past, you know, including um, you know, guys like five yard Lee, you no, know, just everyone and stuff like that. Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is also a thank you to and you said it before, but a thank you to every single person who downloaded five, five yard Lee just text me, no problem. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you said thank you to five yard Lee, and five yard Lee text me just now and said no problem. <laughs> He no listening. kidding, no he kidding. Listening. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. no, I just wanted to thank yeah, every single listener, be it on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, to everyone who's ever said, you know, hey, I listen to this dolphin podcast, I think you listen to for every single person who leaves a like on a YouTube video, who shares it on Twitter, who you know, leaves a comment genuinely from the bottom of our of our heart. You know, when we first started this, we had you know, one, two viewers on YouTube, a couple of listeners on, you know, actually the Spotify. Now, you know, we can't keep count. So again, thank you. Thank you so much. And boss man, how are you doing? Uh, everything's cool, man. Um, I, I second everything you just said. We shouted out Shane, shouted out George, shouted out Wolf. And we didn't shout out 5 Early in the last one. And now it's funny you mentioned them because I was going to mention them in this one and say, yo, we didn't shout out 5 Early last time. And Five Air Lee is doing big things right now. Uh, he's also going to come on to the uh, podcast maybe this week or next week. Not sure. We're going to have him on. We're going to top it up and see what Five Air Lee got going on. But it's, it's Go Time Dolphins is a team for real. So um, we're going to take the. I know. I know we can't take the the sophomore sophomore jump. You know what I'm saying? We can't take the sophomore leap. Last season, COVID kind of slowed us down. So now we're going to take the 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 third year league this year. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I text uh, George, congratulations. I'm like, hey, congratulations, man. Beautiful thing, right? Got married, you know what I'm saying? And this dude texts me back on his wedding day. Like, oh, man, it's awesome. I'm having a blast. And he kept going. I'm like, bro, stop texting me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, stop texting me, man. You good, man. Go do your thing. We'll, we'll chop, chop it up tomorrow or whatnot. Um but yeah, man, it's Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond, but across the world. I'm your boy, Charlie Touche. I got my co-host, Kadeem Simmons, with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. Uh, your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. We out here getting ready for the new season. Cannot wait. Can't wait. Uh, bro, so a lot of developments. A lot of developments coming out in the past couple of days. And we had our episode, our last episode, actually. And I want to say kind of like the past two episodes we've been talking about. What are we going to do with Preston Williams? What's going on with Lynn Bowden? Uh, Tevin Jenkins was an idea from Chicago because there was some interest in, in parting ways with Tevin Jenkins at Chicago. And lo and behold... I kind of want to say the same day the episode came out. Uh, it is reported that the Chicago Bears have interest in Preston Williams. 
and the Miami Dolphins. So shout out to Nick uh, Kerr. He put me onto it, and it was like, yo, y'all want to, y'all want, y'all want the 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 foreseen breaking news before it breaks. Come to Go Time Dolphins, and we're gonna tell you what's about to happen or what should happen. So the fact that it actually did happen like that, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but nothing is done yet. Preston Williams is not a Chicago Bear yet. And it's funny because Lynn Bowden was mentioned in the same article. So what did you make of that, Kadeem? Um, sorry. So the reason, you know, we mentioned the Bears on this podcast was because, was because they were a team heading into the season with a quarterback entering his second year and had zero weapon for him. And as Dolphins fans, we've basically, we, we have witnessed that. So us looking at our team with a plethora, plethora of plethora of wide receiver op, wide receiver options, and going, you know, why not deal with them now? You get the situation where once preseason starts and you know injuries always happen, but it's the last thing you want to see. But once the injuries start, teams get desperate, and you can imagine the Dolphins kind of getting ahead of it now and saying, "Listen, before you get desperate and you know have to offer us a pick or something like that." Is there anything we can do so that you know so that we both win? So before we really delve into the bear situation, no, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this back to you with a thing. But um, yeah, it, like I said, it, it makes it, it made perfect sense. Um, Preston Williams, Lynn Bowden, I'm sure if we really put our head together, there's probably going to be a few other players, not just that wide receiver. I've seen people look at um, sending Mike Gesicki to the Bears. He's someone who probably is not going to get a long-term contract in Miami. Do you throw him and get something else in return? Um, yeah, I I can imagine after the first preseason game and before the second, you might see one move. Um, before I get your opinion on that situation, why does receiver one Jakeem Grant tore his Achilles? It looks like he's out for the season. Do you think we could send either a Preston Williams or a Lynn Bowden to Cleveland. And what do you think we can get in return? Because obviously people are looking at Kareem Hunt. Um, all right. Shout out to Jakeem Grant. Um, we gave away our first giveaway ever were, uh, was a pair of Jakeem game worn, game worn Jakeem Grant gloves. And that was his best game ever, actually. It was the game he had, like, two a punt return and a kick return. Like, he had more than one touchdown, I think, in that game. Uh, returned some kicks, had multiple catches. It was his best game ever. And those were the gloves we gave away here on this podcast. He also gave us a pair of Power Ranger cleats. And if, if you see, maybe you, you guys seen these cleats that uh, he wore, uh, and they were – customized Miami Dolphin Power Ranger cleats. So we rock with Jakeem Grant here on, on Go Time Dolphins, and we would never wish injury on anyone. Um, speedy recovery. I hope everything goes well. Jakeem Grant and Chicago. Uh, or Cleveland. Then you mentioned Kareem Hunt. I think maybe Maybe there's something there where where you know you can same same people Preston Williams, Lynn Bowden, and and the other re- receivers that we have in our in our stable, but I don't think Cleveland would be interested. I mean they could be, but I, I don't I don't foresee something happening with Cleveland as far as our receivers. As far as Kareem Hunt to the Miami Dolphins. I'm interested, but here's something that I don't do. I don't like paying running backs. And Kareem Hunt gets paid about $6 million right now, I think. So he's going to want more than $6 million. And we have Chase Edmonds under contract for just this year with guaranteed money, but he's under contract for next year as well. No guaranteed money. If you guys remember the draft, Coach McDaniel – fell out of his chair literally when a running back was selected in the draft in the third round. We don't know which running back he fell out of his chair for, 
but it tells us that he wanted a running back in the draft. I got to imagine that running back is a thing for the Miami Dolphins. Now that we have Coach Mike McDaniel, I and, and you know I'm going to say this, Kadeem, I think 40 acres and a Hellcat makes the, the team, actually. I, I am I'm locked in on friend of the podcast, Miles, Gask- Miles Gaskin, making this team. So with the four running backs we have now, we have more than four, but with the four on the on the starting, well, not starting, but four going into the fifty three man roster, who I think the four would be. I don't know that a Kareem Hunt trade would be of our best interest because now you're going to pay Kareem Hunt, and if you decide to retain Chase Edmonds next year, let's say Chase Edmonds balls out this year. You, you decide to retain him. Now you're going to have over $12 million of your cap tied up at running back. I don't know if I love that for this team. I was on the record two seasons ago saying we should have brought in Leonard Fournette and James Conner at the same time. So that's similar to this conversation. Okay, you got Chase Edmonds and Kareem Hunt. And a couple of years ago, I said bring in James Conner and Leonard Fournette. Turned out they both had great seasons. I hear you with this. I don't love it. I do believe we give Chase Edmonds a chance because you have Raheem Mostert here. So what I think we should do is let's see how this season plays out. And if Chase isn't uh, a solution, then we'll move on. But we'll move on the right way. Either we get younger and bring in rookies or we go get – if we're going to spend money, the money has to be worth it. What's what's uh David Montgomery looking like? What's Josh Jacobs looking like? What's um uh, Saquon Barkley doing? Uh, but J- Kareem Hunt is not out of the picture. I just I don't I'm not sure about Kareem Hunt right now from from for the Miami Dolphins. Um, perform and Ricky Watson both said on social media that. The thing with Kareem Hunt is that he's not the Kareem, Kareem Hunt of five years ago from Kansas City. Yes, he's still a good running back, but for the Dolphins to bring him in, how much better does the running back room improve? You know, it's not like, you know, a couple of years ago when there was no real clear running back one and Kareem Hunt comes in and, it, like, it's not even a competition. That job is, you know, his straight away. This is a crowded running back room as it is and yet there's a 100% an argument argument to be made that you know how how wide the gap is it between the floor and the ceiling you know um we both said on this podcast that we reckon someone like the the Quandre White is going to shock a lot of people um you've mentioned Raheem Mostert Chase Edmonds you mentioned friend of the podcast Mars Gaskin haven't even mentioned Sony Michelle like, there's dudes in this room who, in the nicest possible way in this scheme, will probably contribute the same amount as a Kareem Hunt and not have to pay that much. Um, we spoke in the last episode about do you pay, you know, Christian Wilkins? We still want to pay Mike Kosicki. You bring Kareem Hunt, and that's definitely saying goodbye to one of those guys. So, yeah. I think, you know, and this is another question to you, if we do end up sending Preston Williams or Lynn Bowden or both to Chicago, do you entertain the idea of bringing back Roquan Smith? Now, for those who haven't seen it... Hold on, hold um, on. Because we, we we didn't really finish here. So before we open that up, who who are the four running backs you think we keep on this on this active roster? Um, most, uh, Raheem Mostert, uh, Chase Edmonds, Sony Michelle and Miles Gaskin. And I think we practice squad... So Quandre White, Jared Dokes again, and we probably get rid of Savon Ahmed. I only think we're going to keep one running back on the practice squad. So if you could keep one running back on the practice squad, who would it be? So Quandre White, and that's not. And I, I think that's because he's a this regime pick and not a. Yeah. You know, no, that's yeah. exactly that's exactly how I got it. I think we're going to keep Raheem Mostert, Chase Edmonds, Sony Michelle, and Forty Acres and a Hellcat, and then I think. Dr. White would be a practice squad. And I think we're going to part ways with uh, Savant Ahmed and Jared Dokes. Because exactly what you said, 
Jared Dokes was not this regime's pick. So, and if you look at Jared Dokes, he fits the New England running back mold. Like that's a New England running back mold. We had a New England runner, we we had a New England head coach, a Patriots head coach. So he fits that mold. He doesn't really fit the Mike McDaniel, Kyle Shanahan type of mold of a running back. So I I, I get that. Now, before we go into Roquan Smith, I still want to finish up the the Tevin Jenkins thing. Like what happens with with yeah we're talking to chicago and we could kind of segue into roquan with this but what happens with the dolphins we're in we're already talking to the same people so we were already talking to the dolphins uh the bears about preston and i'm pretty sure your boy chris greer was already like hey let's let's cross all the t's and all the eyes dot all the eyes right so i gotta imagine everybody was being talked about hey who what do you, how you feel about this how you feel about that how you feel about this? I, like that's that's me with fantasy football. Everybody's movable. Shout out to Go Time Dolphins Fantasy Football League coming up. Reach out to us if you're serious about fantasy football. Uh, so yeah, I gotta believe your boy Chris Gray was ready ready to go with any conversation. So just Tevin Jenkins before we get to Roquan, just Tevin Jenkins. Is there interest, Kadeem? Because I know you brought it up on the other episode. Do you think something shakes with Tevin Jenkins? Um, am, am, am I playing the role of Chris Gray or just you know Kadeem? No, this is just Kadeem Simmons from Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond but across the world. I, I would, I would one hundred percent show the interest, but I don't think that the Dolphins will show interest. Me, I'm. He's one of the first. He would have been the first name that comes up. He was someone who I had mentioned in the pre-draft process last year. I was like. He's a nasty, nasty, nasty white tackle. He's the kind of person who I might even say that on, on the podcast. If you touch our quarterback, he's gonna let you know about it. He's gonna make sure that it's the last time you touch him. Next thing you know, your face is in the dirt. Um. So to me, I 100 percent approach the contract. Co co contract, you no, know, the talk. I I initiate contact with him. See if we can get something done between us and the Bears. Person, but I do not. The flip side to that is. I don't think the Dolphins do it. I think the Dolphins like what they have in Austin Jackson. I think that they might even move Robert Hunt there at, at some point. I don't. I think where the Dolphins are at the moment, outside of centre, they're happy with the rest of the line. I don't agree with it. We've sat on this podcast many a times and said the Dolphins need to bring in better options on the offensive line. Um. So, yeah, I would love to see Tevin Jenkins in a Miami Dolphins uniform. I just don't think it happens. All right, so let us know what's going on with Roquan Smith. So Roquan Smith, um, he's about to get paid, or he wants to get paid. And on Tuesday, he released a statement via social media, which basically said, you know, he's a he grew up a Bears fan. He wants to emulate the Brian Erlachers, all the you know legendary Bears linebackers. But this current Bears front office basically on you know, approaching the contract talks in good faith. He says, you know, he basically said that the offers are not what he wants. We'll set the linebacker market back and that he basically wants out. Um, Dolphin Twitter immediately went, bring this guy in straight away. Um, like, my timeline today was basically bring Wilcon, bring, bring Wilcon Smith to Miami. Make it happen. Um, he was, I believe, drafted in the same year, Jerome Baker. Um, and yeah, he's definitely one of the better linebackers in the league. Um, the Go Time Dolphins the social media account basically tweeted, Tevin Jenkins is nice, Roquan Smith is nice, but Roquan Smith wants to get paid. Why are the Dolphins giving even more money to the linebacker room when they've already paid Jerome Baker and just drafted Chad and Tindall? So that's the covered status of Roquan Smith. Um, so yeah, you know, if I'm now throwing it to you, Charlie, you know, boss man, Charlie Touche, the host of Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast, that not, not only got across the pond, but across the world. Um, do you entertain Roquan Smith for either Preston Williams slash Lynn Bowden? And I guess you have to throw a pick in there as well. We've had this podcast for going on three seasons now. This was our first season on YouTube. 
Shout out to everybody who's been rocking with the audio version. Y'all, y'all really make this thing go. And but we still love our YouTube subscribers. Kadeem, you still don't know how to say the catchphrase the right way. No, I don't. <laughs> hey, I was out with COVID for like two months. It may be, it may have been longer than that. It, it felt like it was longer than that. And Kadeem would butcher the 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 Miami Dolphins podcast that. Nah, you got me messing up. That goes not See? only across the <laughs> pond, but across the world. Bro, this man could not say it the right way. So here, here this man go. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, to answer your question, Kadeem, I would say, and for anyone who doesn't know, Roquan Smith plays on the Bears. So does Tevin Jenkins. You know, everyone's not uh, a Madden expert. You feel me? Everyone's there's some novice that listen to our podcast that may just now be following football and don't know any other players' names. They barely know the team names. But listen, they're both on the same team. So I do not love the idea of Roquan Smith. I love the idea of Roquan Smith. Yes, absolutely, 100%. I just don't like Roquan Smith and $22 million a year. Yep. Here's my thing about Roquan Smith and $22 million a year. It almost guarantees Mike Gesicki is not going to be here after next season. So you can make this happen this season by parting ways with a couple of pieces. I imagine Eric Rowe might have to be let go. He might have to be moved somewhere. I imagine there's a couple more pieces that you have to move around if you're going to pay Roquan Smith this season. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know uh, how, how y'all going to shake that. So if, if you're going to trade for Roquan Smith because he wants a contract, you, you probably don't have to give him this contract this season. You see what I'm saying? So I don't I don't know how you're going to trade for a player that wants a contract and they say, hey, I got you next year. Yo, my old team just said that. You see what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't think that's where, where we're at right now. Now let me break this down a little bit more. I do not like paying running backs because you should be able to find a running back. You should be able to find a good enough running back where your scheme supports this person's skill set and, and, and it's a marriage match made in heaven. Like the, the running back doesn't get paid over $5 million and the scheme allows this running back to produce 900 yards a year. You know what I'm saying? So now you have multiple running, multiple running backs. And Coach McDaniel came in and said, look, the running back touches the ball a thousand times a season. I have a thousand touches. All right. And I need a, I need someone who's going to who's going to collect on most of these touches. Now, what's not going to happen is one person is going to get a thousand touches. That's not just going to happen. So now you have to have multiple running backs. And I'm going to answer the Roquan Smith question. But this is where we at. The reason you're going to have multiple running backs, you're not going to pay all the running backs. You're going to divvy up the work. And and therefore divvy up the, the the salary. That's why I don't I'm not in the business of paying Christian McCaffrey 14 million dollars a year. And the next thing you know, he don't he only plays twice and he only plays six times in in 20 games. I'm not in that business. All right. So I believe you should never have to pay a running back. Seven million dollars is fine. You pay two million two running backs seven million dollars. I'll also be fine with that. May not need it. But if you're drafting well, you draft a running back, you get a, a older running back from free agency, and you have the running back that you're paying. So now that's three running backs, you divvy up the work. And I want to say the same thing about linebacker. Here's the thing. If you put a list, Kadeem, of every single position on a football team, from most important to least important, without a doubt, linebacker would be at the bottom of that list. I'm not saying neglect your linebackers forever. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying linebacker is unimportant. I'm not saying that. But I am saying you have to prioritize your priorities. And if quarterback is the most important position on a team, then tackle is the second most important position on the team. Then cornerback is the third most important position on the team. Then O-line, then, then safety, then receivers, then running backs, I've missed D-line somewhere in there. That D-line goes up up by, by 
O-line and DBs, right? Linebacker is still the last one on the list. Why are we going to pay a linebacker $22 million, bro? I am just not of that elk, and you're not going to get that support from me. Would I love Roquan Smith on this team? 100%. So shout out to Sherrod Steve. Me and him was arguing in the text, going back and forth. This is straight up back and forth. I said, you know what, Steve? We're talking about this today on the, on the podcast. Come come to the podcast. Holler at us on the podcast. And he couldn't make it. You know, he got daddy duties, and he's a businessman himself. So um, shout out to Sherrod Steve because I know he's listening. But And he has some points, but I'm like, bro, he like, oh, if we had Roquan Smith, we can guarantee our, our defense to be a top five defense. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty accurate. But we could be a top five defense this season, Kadeem. We were a 16th ranked defense last year. Middle of the road last year. And we lost seven, eight games straight. How many games did we lose straight? Seven or eight? Seven. seven. We lost seven games straight last year. And we, our defense was fifth, 16th. The reason our defense was 16th last year isn't solely because our defense was a middle of the road defense. It was because our offense wasn't good enough. You see what I'm saying? So now that our offense will be better, our defense will be better because they won't be put in tough, the same positions they were last season, right? So I don't anticipate seven game losing streak this year. This defense is going to be a top 10 defense now. Can it be a top five? It can. If Roquan Smith was on it, would it be a top five? It will. My thing is the offense got better. The defense will get better. So I am just not one to part ways with Mike Gesicki. And I I know I'm a little long-winded here, Kadeem. I'm going to pass it to you. But no, I would not trade for Roquan Smith because he has to get paid $22 million a year. I am not interested in paying a linebacker $22 million a year. Um, before we before I give my opinion on it, you mentioned defense, Dolphins defense. Friend of the podcast, Javon Holland, he rated us with his presence on this podcast. Um, we said when we reach three hundred subscribers, we will give away a fit to side Javon Holland jersey. So if you're still here, you're still listening, you're about to find out how you can potentially win a fit to side Javon Holland Miami Dolphins jersey. All you have to do, and say no trick. It's this simple. Email your jersey size to gotimedolphins at gmail.com. That's all you've got to do. There's no nothing else. Just email your, your jersey size to gotimedolphins at gmail.com. That will put yourself forward to potentially win a fit to side Javon Holland jersey. And we've still got one more giveaway to give away or one more prize to give away. Stay tuned to hear how to win that. Now, for those who know how I got into the NFL in general, I got into NFL through playing Madden. When playing Madden, I loved playing defense. My favorite thing on playing defense was used was you know what they call using in a linebacker. So I'd select the linebacker. That's the person I would play with on defense. I would bait people into throwing the ball. They think it's open. Nope, pick six. So I am a defense guy. If this was Madden and this conversation came up, I wouldn't eat. Like, I would have traded for Roquan Smith the moment I found out he was interested on Madden. But this isn't Madden. I can't massage the cap on Madden like I can in real life. The Dolphins can't do it. Your boy Chris Greer is an absolute genius. But there's something geniuses can't do. They've already committed to paying Jerome Baker. Is Roquan Smith better than Jerome Baker? Yes. And I love the Bake Show. Love him. If I was allowed to, I would have a Jerome Baker jersey. That's how much I love Jerome Baker. <laughs> but you I don't have a Jerome Baker you, jersey. You got a Jerome Baker coffee cup. I do have a Jerome Baker coffee cup. You know what? That's the storage right now. Which I could bring it up. Um, but yeah, you bring in if for the exact same points you made, you bring in Jerome Baker, you are 100 million percent kissing goodbye to Jamaica Kasicki. Unless he's part of that trade, which is what some people... I mean, Roquan Smith, you said Jerome Baker. You bring bring in Roquan Smith. Yeah, you 100% say say goodbye to Mike Kosicki. Some people think he could be part of the trade. Who knows? But, so you say goodbye to Mike Kosicki. You might even have to say goodbye to Christian Wilkins. Might. And 
we might not delve into today, but given the Dolphin depth chart which they've released, it looks like they'll be running a three four scheme next year with I believe it was Raekwon Davis at defensive tackle and then uh, Christian Wilkins, someone else at DE. Jalen Phillips and Melvin Ingram were the outside, outside linebackers, basically. Which means the Dolphins are looking like they're going to play with two inside linebackers. Again, you have Jerome Baker and Roquan Smith at linebacker, inside linebacker. Brilliant. Like, if the Dolphins D-line doesn't you know, clog up the run, you are getting hit by Roquan Smith or maybe Tannen Tindall or someone. It's just that the Dolphins have, you know, now put their resources into the offensive side of the ball. And Roquan Smith is in, isn't the missing piece of the puzzle. The Dolphins still have too many areas to improve on, which means for me, I don't think it's a trade you make. So, listen, if this was... I think even if this was last year, and you can maybe get two years out of Roquan Smith and give him a certain deal, yes. But he's going to be paid like a top five linebacker. And the Dolphins right now don't have top line, top five linebacker money to hand out to someone who, you know, is a luxury. Oh, did you say he was a luxury? Yeah. Because that's what I told Sherrod Steve. And <laughs> and Sherrod Steve told me Mike Gesicki is a luxury. I'm like, no, because what we can do is spread everybody out. And we could beat you with our receivers now. We could beat you with a running game now. Or we could just spread you out and give Mike Gesicki – 12 targets a game. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we could beat you that way because it's going to be a mismatch. So this is hot off the press. The Miami Dolphins have traded uh, Adam Shaheen, tied in Adam Shaheen to Houston, the Houston Texans for a 2023 six round pick. So we move Adam Shaheen and a 2023 seventh round pick to Houston. And we got back a six round pick from Houston. Uh, so that, that that's clearing a little bit up with the tight end room um not doesn't say anything about mike Asiki yet doesn't say oh are we going to retain mike Asiki and, and pay him but it does say how many running how many tight ends we're not going to have on the active roster because we have a, a fullback now so because we have a fullback i had to believe one of them tight ends wasn't going to be on the roster so adam shaheen first had the role shout out to adam shaheen we brought back durham smythe i can't Imagine that Mike Kosicki will be involved in the trade to go to Chicago for Roquan Smith. Although that would be a very good trade, it would be very. It, it that would be you could go one for one in that trade. No one would complain. Who says no? So here's my thing, Kadeem. And I'm gonna be real with you. There is a side of me. There is GM Charlie Touche that says if you could trade. Mike Kosicki and get back Tevin Jenkins and Roquan Smith and you throw in either Preston or Lynn Bowden or both you Dolphins can probably get a pick back in there too from Chicago if you throw in Kosicki, Bowden and Preston Williams and you got Roquan Smith and Tevin Jenkins that, that'll go by itself but depending on how good your boy Chris Greer is we could probably get a pick back from that too but I'm just saying, it works. Chicago will have to move some pieces around and make, make sure they clear a cap to bring in Mike Kosicki since he's on the tag. Uh, but Fields needs targets. So Fields will have Lynn Bolden, Preston Williams, Mike Kosicki, Miami North. You know what I'm saying? Um, and maybe, yeah, if I'm, if I'm Chicago, I'll do that. But if I'm, if I'm Miami, I'll do it too. I'm just saying, I just have an order of operations I just have a football ideology for myself, and it doesn't start with linebackers getting paid $22 million a season. So I would prefer to pay Mike Kosicki $15 million a year and either eat people up with Tyreek Hill and Waddle or run it down their throat with uh, whoever our, our feature back is. And if that's not working, spread everybody out and tell some linebacker or some safety to guard Mike Kosicki and get ready for 12 targets a game. There's multiple ways you can beat down somebody and Mike Kosicki is a weapon so it came out that Mike Kosicki is going to play more in line tight end this season he's not an in line tight end he's a slot receiver so 
it can be a task. But we have to see it. He's too good of a tight end to, to just let walk. So we have to see if he can make the transition from standing up all the time to playing in-line tight end like George Kittle does because that's what, what Mike McDaniel's uh, playbook looks like. It's that right there. In-line tight ends, yeah, if it don't work out, then we'll have to, we have to send them somewhere else because we're not going to pay uh, someone $15 million for four targets a game. That, that can barely block. So, yeah, he has to get his blocking right. He has to get more targets, and I'm all for it. But hey. if there's a way, Kadeem, yeah, sure. Bring them both, Tevin Jenkins and Roquan, and retain Mike Gesicki. You would have to do a lot of moving around, but it's not re- realistic. King of Finland, friend of the podcast, he says... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why, are we, why is King of Finland friend of the podcast? He'd be in the pod. Is, I'm just saying, I thought we reserved that for Miami Dolphin players. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hey, mean. hey, but look, I don't want to sound like King of Finland is not a friend because yeah, I just like, text, I, I, te- I was texting King of Finland yesterday too. So me see, and like, King of Finland, <laughs> I'm just saying. So no shots given. I'm just saying, me and King of Finland was actually texting each other. But yo, I thought friend of the podcast was, was reserved for Miami Dolphin players. That's all. Okay, so look, so like, wh- what do we call? Because I feel like he's more than a guest. Yeah. What do we? Call, yeah. So what do we call those people who aren't Dolphins players, but they're more than a guest? We'll figure like, it out. Can't we'll can't, can't do that right now. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, five yard lead, five yard lead is more than a guest, bro. Sherrod oh, yeah, Steve but, is more than a guest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I feel you. So um, King of Finland said. Says Bears receive Preston Williams and a 2023 third round pick by New England. Dolphins receive Roquan Smith and 2023 seventh round pick. He says that's a realistic trade package, what it could look like for Roquan Smith. Ricky watched them reply saying, Why do the Dolphins need another, another linebacker? Defensive front looks great. If they are trading, why not for where the, the, the need is from center or the right side of the defensive line? King of Finland responds saying Landon Roberts isn't great and you could easily make a case for Baker to move to outside linebacker. Um and I think King I think Ricky Watson kind of come from our you know our full process, which is if the Dolphins are gonna do a trade with the Chicago Bears, you have to get offensive line help. Have to. Because for how good this offensive line has looked in um you know, in training camp so far, from Wednesday, they're going up against opposition players who aren't going to, you know, ease up once once they get past you. You know, Austin Jackson is now going up against you know Tampa Bay Bucks defensive ends, and Tampa that Tampa Bay you know defensive front is nasty. So, you know, it's all good. To, um, friend of the podcast, Austin Jackson, Pancake and Jalen Phillips. And the offensive line holds up in training camp. From Wednesday, we're going to see okay, what is this offensive line really about? Um, so you know, I'll put it to you. I I, I believe I know your answer, but I'm put it to you anyway. Dolphins are you know about to finalize the trade with, with the Chicago Bears. You get your pick of Roquan Smith or Tevin Jenkins. What do you take back in return? I'm taking Tevin Jenkins. Because and he's cheaper too, so he's on his rookie contract. This is his second year of four on his contract. So we will have Tevin Jenkins for the next three seasons, pennies on the dollar. We're gonna Preston Williams gonna get cut, bro. He's gonna get cut. We're not even gonna keep him. He's not even gonna play on this team. So we get a free Tevin Jenkins if we trade him Preston Williams and Lynn, Lynn Bowden, whatever. And a late round pick, a, a, a day three pick for Tevin Jenkins. He's way cheaper than Roquan. Now, that's my answer, but don't get it twisted. If there's a way to do this King of Finland trade where we give a, a third and Preston and get back Roquan and, and we're able to extend Gesicki and Roquan, sign me up. Like, bruh. I'm here for that. I'm not saying I don't want Roquan Smith. I'm just saying 
it's not realistic because you still need O-line help next season. So what this will tell me is if Roquan Smith comes to the Miami Dolphins this season, you have to pay him this season. Next year, you're going to have Mike Kosicki. You're either going to let him walk, which you should have should have just traded him. You know what I'm saying? You're either going to let him walk or you're going to pay him. So you pay Mike Kosicki, you pay Roquan Smith, which I don't even know if it's possible, but you do. You find a way to do it because the cap is elastic. And next thing you know, you can no longer bring in O-line help. So now you have to draft O-line help. So now you're going into the draft, knowingly, we're only here for O-linemen. Now everyone else in the, in, the, in, the, in the league knows you're going into the draft here for O-linemen. People jumping in front of you, taking your picks. You see what I'm saying? So the way the draft is set up, you should go to the draft a year early or two years early and not for needs. Like we're drafting for the future, not for right now. Like, oh, we need linemen. Let's, let's go draft linemen. Because then what if, what if you don't get your linemen? Then what? You're just going to take the, the best available linemen? That's not how you do it. What if the best available linemen isn't that good? So that's not how you do it. So now, nah, man, you gotta you gotta fix the line. Cause the last thing I want to hear, Kadeem, is Dolphins got Roquan Smith, Dolphins got Tyreek Hill, Dolphins got all this help. Cedric Wilson, Chase Edmonds snapped for twelve hundred yards. Tua isn't it? <laughs> that's the last thing I want to hear, bro. Like, and, and instead of saying, "Dang, the old line still isn't right." You see what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro. Like, all these additions look good. They they sound good. They look good. It's it's cool. But people keep forgetting it starts in the trenches. Like, straight up digging in the trenches. Shout out the dog digging in the trenches. You feel me? But nah, bro. You have to fix the O-line. Stop neglecting this O-line, man. Can we fix the O-line before we do anything else? Please and thank you. And then I'll be on board forever. Whatever y'all want to do, if we fix the O-line, I, I, I promise I'll be, I'll be there. You know what I'm saying? Because we already have pro- sitting problems. We don't have a center. Uh, we have a left guard playing center, and he's not that good at center. Then we have a right tackle, a left tackle playing right tackle that he's not great at right tackle. Yet, here we are talking about all these other positions, except for fixing the O-line. Yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm interested in Roquan. I'm interested in Tevin Jenkins, but I, I was never sold on this O-line. Um, You mentioned, you know, going into the draft, basically needing to hit on offensive line picks if you bring a Roquan Smith. I don't want to upset you. I don't want to get you angry. No one would have been amazing to get Roquan Smith and have two first-round picks next year, but the Dolphins want to mess around and lose a first-round pick. So because of that, could you imagine, yeah, bringing in Roquan Smith and going, we have two bats of the cherry next year to draft offensive linemen? We could tur- we could draft two O-line men. I don't even want to do that, bro. I don't even want to think like that, bro. <laughs> and now Mike Gesicki might be one of those pieces getting traded so we can draft two O-line men. That's silliness, bro. I don't want no part of that. One very quick thing as well. Um, Apparently, moving on from Adam Shaheen brings in or clears 1.8 million in cap space. That's not bringing in Roquan Smith. Like, like, people are saying on social media... This is a cap space move. It's not a cap space move. No, nah, this, this was is... a this was a you have 90 people on your roster move and you have to get down to 53, and this was already gonna happen move. Yeah. Say so again, you mentioned it earlier. Preston Williams is probably at this stage 95% chance of getting cut. If you can bring back a seven for Preston Williams, you do it. Because again, it's 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 a free pick. He's going anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if if I'm get, if I'm getting rid of something and someone wants to pay me one pound for it, I'll take I'll take my one pound. Literally, my my one pound right here. This is this is this is one English pound, one English pound. If you give me one English pound for something I'm about to throw away, of course I'm going to take it. I'm a hundred time, times over. Yeah. So also, this is fifty p, a fifty pence piece. You know, half of one pound, and this is one penny. This is the low. This is like, I do you have in, in the UK we call them penny sweets. I guess there'll be like one cent sweet. Do you have anything like that? What's a, a, a sweet is like like candy? Yeah. I mean, when I was like 10, we did. I don't know if anything costs a penny nowadays. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's you know, you, you go to shop with five p and you get you know five little penny sweets and like yeah, I got my penny sweets. You know, yeah, good for you. No, nah, hey, shout out for educating the uh, American viewers, Kadeem. Uh, I had a, I had a couple of pictures of some some notes. You guys call them notes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of pictures. I took some pictures. Oh, you about to break out the notes? Hey, look mm. at that! A twenty. This is, this is a twenty pound note. And you know what? I'm I'm not. I, I don't carry money around with me. Um, mm -hmm. No, if you pay a thing by card these days. But I've got a crisp, crisp twenty pound note here. <laughs> this, this this could probably buy me a Miami Dolphins t shirt or a Miami Dolphins hat. You know, a Miami Dolphin jersey, which I'm not allowed to buy. I know they go for about ninety nine pounds. So you know, um, give me f f four more of these. I can buy myself a brand new Javon Holland jersey. Imaginary Javon Holland jersey. <laughs> I've got one already. Yeah, and he switched out his jersey number because of you. And he said he had to get it off him. Like, <laughs> look, man, y'all know what time it is. Come on over to a uh, bonus time with us. Y'all stay positive. Test negative for Kadeem Simmons. I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. Already. Make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's show time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's show time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Go, go. Don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. So, start off bonus time with two things. Um, We mentioned the Javon Holland giveaway earlier. The second giveaway is a more of a competition. That's a giveaway. Give something away. Um, Madden 23. If you're a gamer, whether you're not a gamer, if you've got you know, a son a niece, a nephew, a daughter, or a best friend you want to give Madden 23 to. Um, this one, once again, email gotimedolphins at gmail.com. This time with how many Dolphins games do they win in preseason? So how many games do the Dolphins win in preseason? Zero, one, two, three. That's all you've got to tell me. Tell me if you guess correctly, you get put forward with a chance to win a free copy of Madden 23. Um, second thing, if you're watching this right now, pause it, head on over to Same Old Dolphins, and we're probably like probably live on Tuesday. <laughs> we're probably live. If, if if you're watching this, like the moment it hits, you know, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, whatever, the chances are myself, Mr. Charlie Touche, aka Boss Man. Josh Katzka, Aaron Kaska, same old Dolphin show. We're live. We're chopping it up. It's going to be amazing. There'll be Dolphins talk. There'll be Manchester United talk with me and Josh. I just devastated right now. Um, if you missed the live show, go back and check it out on YouTube. Same old Dolphins. We love you know chatting football with these guys. So yeah. So again, if you if you are watching this, the moment it's the inbox on YouTube. You subscribed, you got notification bell turned on, ding, and you're watching it. It's like, oh snap, same old dolphins, the guys are on there. Show love, show support. All right. Um, and if, if you happen to catch this a day or two later and you're just catching up on your go time dolphins, after you finish this episode, go on over to same old dolphins and you're gonna see us on same old dolphins chopping it up with the Casca brothers. So yeah, man, y'all y'all already know we got the uh, go time giveaways. Love go time giveaways here on Go Time Dolphins. Cause even something we left out. I was watching an interview with Tevin Jenkins, bro, and dude, the reporter said, "Hey, some something, something such, and such and such. Can you tell us whether your back is good right now?" And dude said, oh, "I'm not gonna disclose that." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hold on. You're not going to tell us if your back is good, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to disclose that information. Like, hold on. So you are approaching this Tevin Jenkins thing like with some concern. So 
That's why I'm unwilling to go third round pick for Tevin Jenkins. Yeah, let's let's we can go ahead and and give give him what we're going to give away anyway, which is Lynn Bowden probably wasn't. Lynn Bowden sounds better than Preston Williams. If I'm the Bears, I want Lynn Bowden more than I want Preston Williams. All right, I'll take them both because you're going to get rid of them both. But yeah, so to and and I'm gonna be fair to Tevin Jenkins. He also said, um, in the same interview, they said, "Can you tell us?" How your back feels, he said, I'm not going to disclose that. And in the same interview, later on, it was like 10 minutes maybe, he said, I'm not worried about my back. So I don't know. Y'all take what y'all want from that. He said, I'm not going to disclose how my back feels earlier on. And then he was like, yo, I'm not worried about my back. Um, I, I'm, I'm at 90% right now, and I expect to be 100% by preseason. So I don't know how you want to take that. But, yeah, so just know – that's what we get. Yeah, and I, I, I was meant when I when I you know asked you what was for Tevin Jenkins, I was going to say bearing in mind that Tevin Jenkins potentially comes with a back injury or you know mm-hmm. back problems, which is something you never want. However, I think if we're trading, and especially with Preston Williams, Preston Williams is going to leave the you know the franchise unless Preston Williams has the most amazing joint practices. And preseason, where he looks like Preston Williams of you know his rookie year, the chances are he's just going to be you know a, a release. Bam, so, wrong, <laughs> unless Preston Williams has a preseason game against Tampa, which is amazing. Like, and it was the best amazing preseason game. Not only is he still not going to be a Miami Dolphin, he's going to get traded <laughs> that week. <laughs> like that's the week he's getting traded. <laughs> like, no, nah, bro. It's like, like Preston like, Williams goes for. A buck fifty, two touchdown. Chris Greer gets on the phone straight away. Yo, Chicago, take him now. Seriously, like, na- yeah. Straight and not, not just Chicago. You call New England. You call Everybody. whoever you want. You start Everybody. a bidding war. But um, but yeah, it's one of those things where if you can get Tevin Jenkins for something that you were going to give away in the first place, in my opinion, it's 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 a Low risk, high reward situation. It's free because if, if if Jenkins, you have to cut Jenkins, you know, due to injury stuff like that. Okay, you no, know, what did you lose? You lost someone who who was going to go anyway. If you can get Preston, if you can get rid of Preston Williams, and again, we love Preston Williams. As 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 Boss Man says, if you start a Madden career and you can create an NFL wide receiver, it's the unicorn. It's Preston Williams. You have his catching at ninety nine and not fifty. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in your night and not 50, but you know, I haven't even here nor there. Um, but yeah, oh. if you can get rid of Preston Williams, who we love, and bring in Tevin Jenkins, and you get the right tackle who was looking like a first round pick, who, who in many you know, evaluators' eyes fell to the Chicago Bears in the second, then your right side is sorted like 100% sorted. like Oh my day, the Dolphins. If the Dolphins are able to get Tevin Jenkins, magically get Roquan Smith and pay Mike Gesicki, if I have another son, he's going to be called Chris Greer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> my son is called Chris Greer. Chris, middle name Greer Simmons. That simple. <laughs> it's going to happen. You, you heard it here on Go Time Dolphins. And again, the parameters. We get Tevin Jenkins... We get Roquan Smith and we pay Mike Gesicki. I'm having another son and he called Chris Greer Simmons. End of. We ended right there. We ended it on that.